G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Sunday morning here in Australia, so obviously sort of Saturday night, you know. Yeah, Saturday morning over in the States and the market is down again. So down another 2%, continues to go down. Bitcoin's still kind of holding around that kind of 34 to $37,000, $38,000 sort of level, like, you know, jumping around between there. But we can see the dominance is growing, but look, it's not growing because people are buying more Bitcoin so much. There are people buying, a lot of people are still panic selling and ETH dominance is dropping. It's more just people are getting out of the riskier altcoin stuff first uh, and they sell their Bitcoin last. But gas price is 32. We haven't seen them that low in ages. So that is really, really good, but it's unfortunate that the gas prices only get down this low when basically everyone's panic selling and things like that. Right, so let's have a look at the market. Now again, this was uh, 1.63 trillion, like only 15, 20 minutes ago. So it continues to go down. And we'll have a look at the charts very, very shortly and see you know, how far can it go down. But we can see there's kind of a mixed bag, uh, you know, a couple of green bits here and there we can see in Bitcoin and a few others, but really it's just red. Yeah, red everywhere. I mean, internet computer, 50%, Bitcoin cash, 50%, 40% for Litecoin, 49% for Uniswap, and we still could go lower. We absolutely could, but again, we'll have a look at the charts in just a second. All right, has anything done really well in the last 24 hours? There's probably going to be one random outlier there, but maybe not. Usually there is, though. Eh? Well, there we go. Huobi BT, see, uh, is up 32%. Hedera Hashgraph up 16%, and Theta Network 9% Celsius. All right, so we definitely have some coins that have done okay, mainly Huobi BTC. Not sure what's going on there, uh, but that has obviously recovered quite well in the last 24 hours. But other than that, really not too much going on. We've got some single digit gains here and there, but nothing too crazy. All right, what about what hasn't done well? What's really been battered about in the last 24 hours? In the top 100. Terra, Polygon, oof. Uh, again, Polygon's, you know, down finally come a, a bit. I mean, this was $2.20, something like that. So it's basically come down, you know, a near full 50% correction from it. Not quite. So Polygon, I still think it's a great project and got a lot going for it. Uh, I am definitely looking at buying some more Polygon. Uh, and we can see, look, lots of double digit losses here in the last 24 hours. And when you go to the last seven days, I mean, most things are kind of around 50% thereabouts. Not all things. Some have done all right. Solana's only down 20. Harmony only down 20. But maybe they didn't do so well the week before that as well. So definitely uh, a lot of pain to be felt and particularly over the last week. I mean, Aave, you know, one of my favorite projects down 43%. I'm definitely looking at buying some more Aave. XRP is down 35%. I'll probably chuck a little bit of money into XRP. Still not willing to chuck too much into it, but I am happy to put some money into it on the dips. Polkadot, I mean, 53%. I really like Polkadot. Definitely looking at getting some more DOT. All right. So yeah, market is down 2%. It looks a lot worse, you know, there, but you're talking about the whole sort of market cap. Now, what I want to do is go over here. This is what people have been talking about. So the Wyckoff basics. So you can see it pumps up, has this kind of peak, comes down, gets a little bit higher, comes down, gets a little bit higher, and then we go into this mass sell-off. Now we're going to have a look at the uh, daily Bitcoin chart. Pumps up, comes down, pumps up a little bit higher, comes down, pumps up a little bit higher, and then you get this big sell-off. This almost completely mirrors this. So this is what's been going on. This is actually, it's market manipulation. It's the big players that are doing this. You know, not just institutions, it'll be some institutions, but also whales and hedge funds and things like that. So this is what has happened. This is almost pinpoint perfect resembling that like you know if we kind of drag that out and you have a look at that there and then you have a look at that there almost perfect now the question is how much further down can we come because this isn't uh, against the Bitcoin chart this is just against another chart to the downside so now we got to have a look again so I put this 
here this is from the peak low to the peak high so the one point the sorry the 0.618 are golden fibonacci retracement level that sits around twenty seven twenty eight thousand dollars so really this is where i think it could come down to and then i would expect it to bounce but if it really goes too much lower this because it could wick down a little bit lower then i would be worried that we're in a bear market but in saying that this shows that some big players are here and now are trying to manipulate the market for me if we started to go into a bear market i would definitely sell uh, a number of my altcoin positions uh, and some of them would probably uh, not make too much money out of them at all but again i'm really looking it has to be bitcoin you know sort of no, oh, actually, I don't know. That, that's hard to say because, I mean, if Bitcoin did start to come down towards the $20,000 level, <laughs> I mean, that's just a retest of that and I would expect it to probably go back up more. I don't think we're going to see Bitcoin come from 60000 and go all the way back down to, you know, sort of $6,000, $5,000 again. But look, this is crypto. It's a wild, wild market. Really, for me, I'm probably actually not going to panic sell. No matter what ha happens, I'm just going to hold and I'm going to continue to buy the dip. You know, if we're really going down, I'll be buying more Ethereum and Bitcoin than any of my altcoins. I'll just leave them as they are because they're likely going to get hammered the worst. And I'll just buy Bitcoin and altcoins. But in all fairness, I think this is just, you know, this. And then we start to make our way back up. I don't think we're going into a bear market. That's my personal opinion. Now, there's also reasons for it. So we're having a look at the daily, definitely under the 200 day. But... We're only just under the 200 day. And what have we got here? An indecision candle. So it's almost midnight and we've got a candle that's done nothing. It's just completely fat, flat. So could we go lower and again, come down to this, sorry, it'll be there, the $27,000 level? Definitely possible, but I would expect a rebound from there. But I could be wrong. But let's now go have a look. So that's the daily. What's the weekly showing us? So the weekly, we've dipped below the 21 uh, exponential moving average. But we are finding support on the 34 week exponential moving average now bitcoin is known to kind of bounce between these two averages and unfortunately well not unfortunately but this is the uh binance uh weekly chart it doesn't have a whole lot of history uh compared to some of the other ones but it quite often bounces around here and really only when it loses support under the 34 week moving average do you get really sort of you know too worried and think that we're going into a bear market which is what happened here not bear, not rejected bear, not rejected bear, and only finally here did we break up above it, but then we came here, got rejected, fell under, came over, and got rejected again. So for me, that's kind of the things that I'm looking for at the moment. If we really dip below this sort of 34-week exponential moving average, uh, then I will be concerned, but just wicking below, not so much. But if we can't get above kind of the 21 uh, week exponential moving average and we roll over and continue to go lower then definitely uh, that could be troubling signs and look I'm no chart expert I watched uh, Alessio sorry I don't know how to say his name uh, he's another youtuber I really like his channel <laughs> I'll, I'll give him credit uh, in the next video I just I know it's Alessio Ciano or something like that and he was showing this I've never really used the 34 week uh, exponential moving average too much I have used the 21 week exponential moving average a number of times so that's what I'm keeping a lookout for can we get back above the 21 uh, exponential week moving average which is about 45,000 and can we then maybe get a little bit above come back test it and then start to move high if not definitely could be going into a bear market but i really don't think we are let's go to the monthly all right we can see that the we haven't had too many red months really since this uh bull market kind of began so it happened in around about sort of may uh so just after i think it was around about here yep so about may 2020 so a year ago that was the halving one two sort of an indecision really we've only had you could sort of say three red month red monthly candles in a year i mean look they're not completely uncommon and you can get some pretty big ones on occasions so it's not like it's the end of the world but i do think we're going to find some support here but the problem is the big players are here the big money's here 
they watch all these videos and they collect sentiment. So if too many people on YouTube are saying that they think it's going up from here, it's probably going to be down here. But it's not just YouTube, it's Twitter and Instagram and all those sort of things. They are going to counter trade. So for me, here's my plan. The good projects that I believe in and think fundamentally are good and aren't going anywhere. So if we're in a bear market, I will really just kind of DCA into uh, Bitcoin, but I won't really be putting too much in. It'll be little bits. Let's say I've got $100 a week to invest and Bitcoin is just in a bear market and going down. I'll probably put $50 of that in and I'll have the other $50 sitting on the side waiting for when I see a trend reversal then to really get in and I'll just keep putting $50 a week, $50 a week, even though I've got 100 waiting until I see a bottom and what I think is a trend reversal where things are starting to go up. And again, this is monthly. So if we had one green month and then we started to go into a second green month, this is where I'd be saying right out, I think there is a trend reversal because it's unlikely you're going to have two green months and then it just rolls over. You can sort of see that from here. Once you start to go into a bear market, you generally don't have two green months and then simply roll roll over. So that would be my key right there. Rightio, I think this is a reversal and that's where those other $50 a week, I would suddenly put that stuff in and I would really sort of get uh, into that. They're the things that I'm kind of looking for. Again, if we see another red candle month after this, depending on how brutal it is, uh, yeah, I really don't think we're gonna come down too low, but there are a lot of people saying they expect uh, for us to come back and sort of retest this 20,000. So for me, if we keep seeing red candles, I'll just continue to DCA into Ethereum, continue to DCA into Bitcoin. But again, if it's $100 a week I'm putting in, I'll only put in $50 of that. So it'll be $25 uh, to Ethereum, $25 to Bitcoin, or however you wanna swap it. This is my plan. Again, it's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is what I would do. And I would just keep putting $50 a week out of the 100 into it until I, until I saw a trend reversal. Then, if we had two green months, I would be pretty confident that things have now changed and we're finally about to go up. And I would grab those other $50 uh, per week. However, and this might have taken a year for that to happen. Who knows? And then I would start to put it in. And that's where the maximum opportunity is going to come. And the reason I'm still putting money in when it's going down is because I don't know when it's gonna change. And I don't wanna simply not put uh, any money in and chuck it all in on a green candle to find out, no, I was wrong, it goes even lower. DCA is the best method, and investing is a much better method than trading. Trading's really, really hard, and that's why I don't do too much trading at all. I do some swing trades on occasion, and sometimes they've worked really well for me, most of the time, they're just kind of, you know, it's kind of neither here nor there. So again, it's just something I like to play with on occasions. But this is what I'm looking for. I do think that we're going to have a green candle after this. And if we do have another red candle, I expect it to be fairly small and something like that. But we are already getting close uh, to the end of this month. So can we go lower again for another month? possible but i would be surprised if it's going to come down sort of below that twenty-seven thousand dollar level as i said we go back over here this is where i think it should find support around the 26 27 000. it's not to say it can't wick down below and that's on the daily all right let's move on to some bitcoin news well not bitcoin news crypto news so bitcoin's volatility is the price you pay for outperforming the s p by 10x this is what michael saylor said and he's so true if you can't handle these kind of brutal retracements, well, then you're not deserving of 10x better than anything else that we kind of have. That's how these games are played. And that's why I continue to put money in all the time, my dollar cost average. And my dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin when it's going on a big run? No, when it's going on a big run, I'm dollar cost averaging into my alts because I know they are going to go absolutely explode. But look, not all of them. I hope that I've invested in good ones. And I am looking to buy alts uh, at the moment, but I'm just not chucking everything in. I really am waiting to see what happens. But I feel like a lot of alts are pretty good buys at the moment, down 50% uh, in the last week. That sounds like a good buy price. But again, I put in just a little bit. And if it turns out I was wrong, that's okay. I've got money on the side. And if we are going into a bear market, then I'm just DCAing really into Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum. You know, 
could I change my mind and find some other projects? Yes, some DeFi projects I'm really bullish on. Yes, but I think the altcoins are going to get hit super, super hard. Even I think Ethereum will get pretty hit pretty hard in the next uh, bear market. But, you know, I just don't want to miss out and find out that it was only, again, the market's changed this time. It's doing things that it hasn't done before, but it's still fairly similar. So I don't want to not be putting money in to find out that it was going to rock it up and I was just waiting for it to get lower. So hence why I would always continue to DCA at least a little bit. All right, next story, Elon Musk. So everyone's been really brutal towards him and you know his treatment of crypto uh, via Twitter and all of that. Look, he's an eccentric dude uh, and he's going to just say what's on his mind. He's very opinionated and he's allowed to be. So this was an interesting tweet. Yo, Elon, what do you think about the peeps who are angry at you because of crypto? The true battle is between fiat and crypto. On balance, I support the latter. That's crypto, so the second one. So Elon's copped a whole lot of you know stick and all the rest of it, but he's probably done crypto a favor. I think it was probably getting too outlandish, and now he's just simply, you know, whether he did that on purpose or not, I don't know. And if he did, maybe he's just, you know, all kinds of genius and not just, you know, the rocket and car genius that we think he is. Because I think this is a good, healthy retracement uh, to then really boost the market to go to that next level. But we have to keep in mind this could be the start of a bear market. I just personally don't think it is and I'm not ready to... Uh, not put more money into the market. Like I said, I'll DCA all the time, but if we do go into that real bear market, then I won't be chucking lots of money and I'll be you know, just putting little bits here and there. Now, how fast things can change. Goldman Sachs reconsiders whether Bitcoin is legitimate asset. So a little over a year ago, the investment bank said crypto was not an asset class. Now it's taking a second look. And I bet it's taking a second look on this big massive dip I think big institutions are going to pile into Bitcoin right now. Now, again, they are what is considered smart money, and I think they're going to do exactly what I was just talking about. They're unsure whether we're going into a bear market. So let's say they've got $100 million on the sideline to go into Bitcoin. They probably put 30, 40, maybe even 50 million of it into Bitcoin sort of you know, on these lows, particularly when it was down at 30,000. Then they simply hold that last you know, $50 million and wait and see what happens. And then they DCA in from there. In case it keeps going up, sweet, they bought a good position uh, at you know, $30,000. And if it continues to go lower, they just DCA in uh, until the market turns. Because that's what smart money does. They don't try and time the market exactly. They don't have to. The money, the real big money, is all made in between the peak and the trough. You don't have to know exactly when it's going to hit the top. You don't have to know exactly when it's going to hit the bottom. You've just got to be able to read some charts and then make some informed decisions. So Goldman Sachs already changing their tune and they they bashed Bitcoin for ages and now all of a sudden they're taking a second look. And there was something interesting down here where someone said, um, where is it? Uh, here, unsurprisingly, Novogratz answers the question of crypto as an asset class in the affirmative. Goldman said in its report that the CEO argues that the mere fact that a critical mass of credible investors and institutions is now engaging with crypto assets, uh, crypto assets has cemented their position as an official asset class. This is real. This is legit. It's not going anywhere. Even Sonnenheim joins in in the recent report ascertaining that crypto isn't going anywhere. Institutional investors now generally appreciate the digital asset uh, is here to stay with investors increasingly attracted to the finite quality assets uh, like Bitcoin. So yes, it's all scary at the moment, but if you've done your research, you believe in projects and whether it's just one or it's a whole stack, put some money and get some skin in the game. Don't throw everything in put in maybe 30% of what you're willing to invest and then just start to DCA from there because if it continues to go down then that's all right you've still got money to buy at the lower prices as well and if it continue and if it then starts to turn around and go up then you're going to be looking pretty smart after that and that is literally how these big guys play when bitcoin dipped to and it says over here so whales scooped up 5.5 billion dollars in bitcoin as btc price dropped below 36k i'm telling you right now these whales didn't go all in 
They just had money sitting on the side. And again, if it was a hundred million, they probably threw thirty million dollars at Bitcoin when it was under thirty six thousand. They've still got another seventy million sitting on the side. And if it goes lower, they'll buy more. And if it starts to creep up, then they're gonna DCA in on the way up as well. That is how the big money's made. Have money sitting on the side for if there is a really big dip, like a 40, 50 percent correction, boom, chuck some of that money in and then simply DCA, whether it's going up or whether it's going down after that. And eventually you will have yourself a good portfolio. And once it really does get on its next big boom, you're probably gonna be sitting pretty again. There's no guarantees in life. I can't offer you financial advice, but I know that's what I do. And I know that's what these guys do. The information is out there. If you wanna copy them, then that's what you should do. But just know, that investing is the easier way. Trying to trade this stuff is super hard. I've made some really great gains uh, investing like this in cryptocurrencies. Have I lost a whole lot of unrealized gains lately? Absolutely. But I know in the long run, four, five, 10, 20 years time, I'm gonna be sitting super pretty and I've put my, my money where my mouth is and invested in a number of uh, cryptocurrencies that I believe have long term. And you just go back and look at my videos and you'll see them. And so no matter what happens, I don't need all of them to become winners. I really only need a couple of them to become winners. And I, I personally think more than just one or two will become winners. And hopefully I will make that life-changing generational kind of wealth. Anyway, chilies. This is something I never got into uh, and I've been kicking myself. And now that it's on... Uh, quite a big retracement I'm looking to get into it so the whole NFT space I think it's going to get heaps bigger again I'm not investing in the NFTs themselves I just don't know enough about them but the spaces behind them so the popular fan token reward and engagement blockchain Chili's notched another win yesterday by signing a pair of European uh, racing teams in a press conference on Friday, uh, I don't know how to say that, Sokios.com, a fan token app built on Chili's announced that Ashton Martin, uh, don't know how to say that, and Alfa Romeo Racing were the latest to launch tokens on the platform. So Chili's is something that I'm interested in and I want to buy uh, on this dip. Uh, I don't have any money on me right now to sort of just chuck into it. The money I do have uh, is kind of sitting on the sides. I've got some uh, money coming and that's what I'm planning to put into Chili's. But knowing my luck, I won't get that money until Chili's is already you know, another 20, 30% up from where it currently is. But look, again, that's the way it goes. I don't need to buy the exact bottom. I just gotta be sort of in between. All right, now, last thing I wanna show you. So this is a tweet I put out. Absolutely no one liked it, but I'm not that big on Twitter at the moment and I didn't hashtag anything. But this is you know, my sentiment to the market right now. With this obvious market manipulation going on, I can't believe people still haven't worked out, worked out how to beat the big players. A, so the answer, if you have invested in something good, don't sell. Why are you selling? If it's good, there's no point in selling, except for here. You only sell if you hit a target. So if you bought in at 3,000 and you said, I'm gonna take some profit at 6,000, cool. Take some profit at 6,000 and look to reinvest. Now here's the other one. If there is something better, if there's not anything better, why are you selling? Now also the last part, the fundamentals have changed. Are we now going into a bear market or has there been a code error or something like that happening? If there's a bear market, then yes, I guess you can sell. But, you know, be careful at selling for a loss. Again, if you're in a good project, they're just going to go through downturns. And I learned that from 2017, and I've said this a number of times. I bought late in 2000, 2017, watch it go to sky high prices, watch it turn into almost nothing, didn't sell, simply hold. And now that money I put in in 2017 is worth more than it ever was uh, in 2017. I've had a big retracement now but just simply holding is what's done me the best. All right, look, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Market is on a bit of a downtrend at the moment, so just be careful, and I'll see you next time.